April in Paris. I'm often asked, is that me looking expectantly at the Eiffel Tower in the picture? And the answer is yes. I must say my hopes were generally fulfilled on this week's holiday in Paris. The first morning took us to this beautiful chapel of Sacred Heart, which dominates the city, perched right on top of the hill, and is rather a beautiful building built of white marble. Here you see some members of the party descending the steps, leading down to the small forecourt where the coach awaited us. This coach took us on many of our various expeditions around the city. Now you see the old guide who helped us to understand so many of the features. The Garden of the Tuileries and the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel and some of Longview Sons culottes wandering about at the foot of it, looking rather interested in the camera at that point. A picture of the famous Louvre, which gives you some idea of the tremendous size of this palace now used as a museum, and the typical Paris traffic, of course. A picture which I always find charming. This was taken uh, when we stopped on our way to Fontainebleau. We were, th at the time, eating lunch in the courtyard of an old French inn. Entering this majestic chateau of Fontainebleau, passing over the spot where Napoleon said goodbye to his troops after being defeated at Waterloo, and coming up to that world-renowned dual staircase, we passed through the building and into the inner courtyard which is as big as the forecourt, which you've just seen. Some members of the party throw in coins into the fountain in typical fashion, since the, the legend is that people who throw coins in will return to this spot. After a very interesting afternoon's visit, we come down this dual stairway. The guide can be seen quite prominently on the picture. Saunter towards the gates and say goodbye to Fontainebleau. Most of the roads which lead into Paris are just as straight as this one, and it's amazing what risks people will take just to get themselves on the picture. My risk was that I was on the roadside in danger of being left behind. Fortunately, the coach stopped, and I ran across the road, braving the French traffic to do so, and returned to headquarters. One morning took us on a walking trip to the Louvre itself. At this stage we were just wandering through these streets and courtyards to spend a very short time, all too brief time, in that wonderful museum. We were blessed with fine weather throughout the week and each morning we turned out from the hotel, walked down the street past the Gare du Nord leaving the hotel behind, hurrying across the road, hurry up girls, Mrs. Davis leading her band of beauties there, to go and visit the various places which we'd already marked out. Of course, we couldn't pass by the ice cream cart, even though we were going to visit the place where Napoleon was buried. Les Anvilid, here we come, leading up to the main gateway. Wandering along in this beautiful sunshine. And this huge mausoleum now contains the remains of this famous historic figure. Some infamous historic figures there on the steps. Much of our time was spent pleasantly in the typical Parisian fashion. Drinking soft drinks on the sidewalk watching the world go by, taking things very easily, as you'll see. Easter Monday morning, and it seemed that all Paris had turned out to cluster at the foot of the Eiffel Tower and sit around in these pleasant gardens, or to crowd into queues to ascend the Eiffel Tower and 
there to enjoy this wonderful panoramic view, looking down on the River Seine and the truly majestic sea which you see here, the Chapel of Sacred Hearts at the top of the hill, and many of the wonderful buildings which we'd already walked to, standing out from this tremendous crowd of buildings stretching out to the horizon in every direction. A truly wonderful city that invites a return visit. Anyone who can't stand heights, of course, will get some idea of the heights at which we were standing at this point, looking down at the Champ de Mars towards the military college. It is possible to spend a considerable amount of time on the Eiffel Tower itself, since there are book stalls and a cafe and various places of interest. Having viewed the Arc de Triomphe from the Eiffel Tower, we decided to walk from it and pay our visit to the French version of the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior. Here you see the party, rather lazily walking at this stage since it was a very hot day. The next day was a little cooler and a little rainier, and you see the typical French umbrella as a protection, quite decorative. that Napoleon-esque figure in the middle of the children there, I wonder. The boats were provided for all kinds of weather, as you'll notice, quite covered in against the elements. And we had a pleasant tour around the Ile de la Cité. The last day, unfortunately, and here you see the party wandering about the courtyard of the Palace of Versailles. This palace, tremendous as it is, seems to carry with it some of the sorrowful spirit which is associated with the beginning of the French Revolution. And I personally, personally couldn't escape feeling of the sadness which that thought brought to mind. However, the gardens themselves were pleasant and the building, as I said before, was very impressive. 